Have you been diagnosed with an ovarian cyst and curious what's next? Are you worried about having an ovarian cyst and curious what that means? Today, we are going to learn all about ovarian cysts, what they are, how they're diagnosed, treatment options, and when to worry. Welcome to Brave and Curious, the podcast where we do a deep dive into fertility, reproductive health, and wellness with science and compassion. I'm your host, Dr. Laura Shaheen, a double board certified OBGYN and reproductive endocrinologist here to stay brave and curious with you. Today, I am curious all about ovarian cysts, and we're going to learn so much. Today, we're going to go over five main topics when it comes to ovarian cysts. Topic number one, symptoms of ovarian cysts. How do you know if you have one or not? Topic number two, different types of ovarian cysts. There's lots of different types and you're going to learn all about it. Topic number three, causes of ovarian cysts and why they happen. Topic number four, treatment options. And topic number five, when you should really worry about ovarian cysts. And here's the secret, not very often. Now make sure and stick around. I'm going to give you three important questions to ask your doctor if you are diagnosed with an ovarian cyst. But let's start learning all about ovarian cysts. First of all, ovarian cysts are actually quite common and you don't need to worry about most of them. I gotta let you know, any fluid-filled structure in the body is technically called a cyst, but we hear the word cyst and we automatically think something is wrong and people often think, oh my gosh, I must have cancer. That is not the case. Ovaries are constantly changing, they're dynamic, and if you are ovulating, you are technically making an ovarian cyst every single cycle. Every single menstrual cycle, the ovaries are recruiting and maturing an egg, and that egg is in a structure called a follicle. A follicle is just a fluid-filled structure within the ovary. In the middle of the cycle, the egg ovulates. It comes out of that follicle. The egg goes into the fallopian tube, hopefully to meet a sperm and get pregnant. But that structure that was supporting the maturing egg that eventually ovulates is a follicle, and it's a that particular follicle is a cyst because it's a fluid-filled structure. So, so many patients get imaging, ultrasound, CT scans, whatever, and they're going through the results and reading what the radiologist reports. And it'll say, hey, in the right ovary, there's a simple two centimeter ovarian cyst. And people say, oh my gosh, I I have a cyst, something's wrong, must be cancer. And most of the time, it's just a follicle that's about to ovulate Or after you ovulate, that follicle, which looks like a typical fluid-filled simple structure, once it releases the egg, it can some it turns into something called a corpus luteum cyst, which looks a little bit different than a follicular cyst. It's the second half of the menstrual cycle, that ovary and that follicle that's now turned into a corpus luteum is starting to make progesterone to actually support the uterine lining and to support the embryo that's hopefully coming down from the fallopian tube to implant. So the ovary is dynamic and it almost always can and have something that looks on it like a cyst or a follicle or a corpus luteum. And these are all normal and it's normal function and quite common for the ovaries to look like they have structures on them because they're working. What are symptoms of an ovarian cyst? So a lot of times people don't get symptoms from cysts in their ovaries, but sometimes people can explain discomfort, fullness, pain, kind of typically on one side of their pelvis or abdomen compared to the other. Sometimes people will feel bloated, full, a little bit nauseated. And these symptoms can come and go as the cyst occurs and maybe resolves on its own. Now, sometimes people can have very significant symptoms from ovarian cysts that are actually causing problems. So sometimes people will say, hey, I had an ovarian cyst, it ruptured, and I had so much pain, I ended up in the emergency room. Sometimes people can have cysts that really do rupture, and that fluid kind of comes out of the ovary and can be very irritating to the lining of the uterus and the pelvis. Sometimes where ovulation happens, a blood vessel is involved, and people can actually have bleeding from ovulation or from this ruptured cyst. And that blood can be very irritating to the lining of the abdomen and the pelvis. I mean, blood is a warning sign to say, hey, there's not supposed to be blood in this abdominal cavity. Something is going on. You've got to pay attention. 
So people can sometimes have so much pain, go and have imaging and they'll say, oh yeah, it looks like there was a cyst on your ovary. There's a little bit of free fluid around the ovary and in the pelvis. I bet this pain is from a ruptured cyst and it's just going to get better or going to give you some pain medication to help with your current comfort, but you're going to get better on your own. Some other significant symptoms that can happen with a large ovarian cyst is that sometimes symptoms from ovarian torsion. Sometimes cysts can get so big that they actually throw off the balance and the weight of the ovary. The ovary is actually suspended by ligaments on either side. Some of the ligaments are attached to the sidewall and the pelvis, and the other ligaments are attached to the uterus. And if there's a large cyst and the ovary twists on itself, this is called ovarian torsion, and it can be extremely painful. So it can feel like the most intense pain you could ever imagine. People have described to me like dropping on the floor at significant pain, having significant nausea, feel like vomiting. Basically what's happening is it's the ovary is like a testicle. Imagine, you know, guys get hit with a soccer ball, oh, testicular torsion. It's like the worst pain you can imagine. Well, that can happen inside a woman's body as well. And the ovary can twist on itself. This can be a medical emergency because um, someone can be in so much pain. If the cyst is found and people are worried about blood supply to the ovary, because within those little ligaments that are suspending and balancing the ovary, they get twisted. The ligaments have blood vessels in them. And if it doesn't untwist or it gets really, really twisted, you can actually lose blood supply to the ovary. And you need to have a laparoscopy to untwist the ovary. So this is rare. Um, so is having a cyst rupture and having so much pain that you end up in the emergency room. But these are cysts that can result in significant symptoms. So symptoms for ovarian cysts could either be something mild, like bloating, a little bit of discomfort, like we talked about the nausea, feeling full, and it kind of goes away. Or if there is some pathology or something that's really going on in your body, your body's going to tell you and you're going to figure out if the significant pain is from ovarian torsion or maybe a cyst that's already ruptured, but it's going to resolve on its own. I'm going to take a break and we'll get back to learning all about ovarian cysts in just a minute. But I want to thank you so much for being here. This podcast is reaching so many people and part of it is because of your engagement. So take a minute and follow the show wherever you're listening. Give it a review. Let us know what you love learning about and what you want us to cover in the future. Letting us know helps so much. Now let's get back to learning. Topic number two, what types of ovarian cysts are there? Well, it really depends on what's going on with the cyst and what cells are within the cyst that define it. So there's five main types or categories of ovarian cysts. Category number one, functional ovarian cysts. These are the type of the cysts I was talking about earlier in the discussion where the ovaries are functioning, they're working, they are ovulating, and then in the second half of the cycle, creating progesterone to support the uterine lining or a pregnancy. And so in the first half of the cycle, you can see a simple ovarian cyst. It's a follicle that's maturing that egg. After ovulation, you can see a corpus luteus cyst that's making progesterone. And so these are functional cysts and they are normal and they happen with ovulation and they will resolve on their own. Category number two is polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS can have cyst-like appearance on the ovaries. Now, I really want to clarify something. I wish that we didn't call this PCOS. I wish we called it poly egg syndrome or poly follicular syndrome because, again, the word cyst has a negative connotation to it. And people with PCOS appearing ovaries actually just have lots and lots of eggs that are up for grabs. And I'll show you some pictures here. But instead of, you know, maybe six to eight resting follicles on the ovary, PCOS ovary can have up to 20, or they can be described as having a pearl necklace. So the follicles kind of are all lined up around the edge of the ovary. I'll show you a picture here. Um, and these are actually just all little follicles that are kind of stuck. They're trying to ovulate. That's why people with PCOS have irregular ovulation because they're not 
um, hormonally communicating as easily. They don't ovulate as regularly and these kind of follicles build up over time. Got some great videos here that teach you more about PCOS. But people can be told, oh, you have little cysts on your ovaries. You have PCOS appearing ovaries. And you can't just diagnose somebody with PCOS based on an ultrasound appearance. Somebody could just have a great egg count. Um, but this is some cysts or um, collections of little follicles that can be on the ovary and can be part of a diagnosis that you've seen or in your radiology report. And I just want to make sure you understand what they are actually describing. Category number three, endometriomas. So endometriosis is a chronic inflammatory condition or disease in which tissue that looks just like the tissue that's found inside the uterine lining is actually found outside of the uterine lining. And it can found, be found in little implants around the pelvic wall, along the fallopian tubes, on the outside of the uterus. And it can be a collection of this tissue within the ovary. And it's kind of walled off a little bit. And it looks like a cyst. Um, it has a typical appearance on ultrasound. I'll show a picture here. They call it a ground glass appearance. And, and if this is opened, like if someone has a laparoscopy and they're trying to remove the cyst, inside what comes out looks like melted chocolate. So people sometimes call this, um, you know, an endometrioma, like a chocolate cyst or a chocolate fluid filled appearance, it's just because it's so distinct looking um, once you see it, if you are doing a laparoscopy and helping somebody with endometriosis and this type of cyst. Category number four are dermoid cysts or mature uh Cystic teratomas is the technical name. And what this is, is a collection of cells within the ovary that's lots of different types of cells. So it has a distinct appearance on ultrasound. You can actually see little white dots and sometimes there'll be um, fluid structures and sometimes solid structures. Like it just looks like a cyst that has lots of different material in it. And if you do a cystectomy or open up a dermoid, and I have seen this, you can see all types of tissue inside. It can be hair, skin cells, teeth, and it bones. I mean, it's just, it's amazing. So it's basically these cells that have somehow turned on and they've turned from germ cells into these very different types of cells. And it's um, unique. Um, most of the time, it's not cancer. It's not cancerous cells, but oftentimes people will be followed for dermoid looking cysts and then eventually maybe have them removed laparoscopically. And the fifth category is something called a cyst adenoma. Same thing, collection of cells within the ovary. And these just happen to be an overgrowth of a certain type of cell and it's just walled off within the ovary. And again, this is typically benign as well. Topic number three, what causes ovarian cysts? Well, um, just ovulating and menstruating can cause the follicular cells and the luteal cells that lead to follicular cysts and corpus luteus cysts. Um, sometimes there can be ovarian dysfunction. And sometimes I, the ovary can try to ovulate and resolve the fluid within the cyst, but it just sort of sticks around for a little while. So hormonal changes, menstrual changes, ovulatory dysfunction um, can all result in ovarian cysts that could possibly go away on their own, or they could just be monitored for a little while. Now, other types of cysts I described, of course, endometriosis. And if some of it gets walled off within a certain part of the ovary, that is an endometrioma. So that type of cyst is from endometriosis. And the dermoid cyst or the cyst adenoma, this is an overgrowth of just different types of cells that can be found within the ovary. And it's hard to know exactly why some people have these type of cysts develop and others don't. But either the cause of the ovarian cysts is either hormonal changes or ovulatory dysfunction, normal, regular menstruation and ovulation, or an overgrowth of cells that is just a little bit different. Topic number four, treatment for ovarian cysts really depends what's going on. If you're symptomatic and you're in pain and you have imaging and it looks like it was a ruptured cyst and you're recovering and feeling a little bit better, you could just monitor. But if there's a large cyst there and your doctor is worried about ovarian torsion, you might have a laparoscopy in order to untwist the ovary and keep your ovary healthy. 
if the ovarian cyst is found on imaging and you're not symptomatic, then I think about treatment in a couple of different ways. You can think about monitoring the cyst, you can think about treating it with medication, or you can think about it with surgery. So it really depends on what the cyst is and what the suspicions are. What I mean by monitoring is if you find a cyst incidentally, um, oftentimes your doctor will just say, well, let's check again in a month. And if it's gone, you know it was a functional cyst and it's resolved and everything is okay. Sometimes cysts are persistent and they're, you continue monitoring. Sometimes you will monitor for a few months or every six months. And honestly, if it stays the same, you're asymptomatic, it might just be something that you and your doctor monitor. If you have one of these ruptured cysts that uh, really was significant pain and sent you to the emergency room and it's from ovulation, there are some people where this happens more than once in their life. And sometimes the doctor will actually off offer them um, medication to prevent them from ovulating. So this doesn't happen again. If somebody doesn't want to conceive and they keep having pain from ruptured cysts with ovulation, then sometimes people will be offered birth control pills or NuvaRing or some sort of hormonal treatment to keep them from ovulating. So they, this doesn't happen again. And as far as surgery as a treatment for ovarian cysts, it really depends on the big picture. If someone's having pain, there's suspicions of endometriosis, the cyst looks like an endometrioma, then maybe doing surgery to treat the overall picture of endometriosis, not just the cyst, but maybe that would be really helpful. If the cyst looks like it's changing, um, if there's concerns for what it looks like, maybe there's some abnormal cells. I hate to say the word cancer, but that's really the only definitive way to make sure that the ovarian cyst is not cancer, is doing surgery, but it's not something that everybody needs to do immediately, right away. And you always want to talk about pros and cons with your doctor. And that comes to topic number five, like when should you worry about ovarian cysts? Well, this is a discussion with your doctor. Something that is asymptomatic, looks simple on ultrasound, resolves, or it's simple, but you can follow it over time, is very reassuring. Cancer is something that the cells are changing very, very quickly. Um, uh, your doctor will think about other risk factors like your age, your family history, what it looks like on the ultrasound, uh, maybe you do a follow-up ultrasound. But at any time, if someone is worried or you're having a discussion of pros and cons about this cyst, if you're just so worried about it, you know, you can have laparoscopy, you can have the cyst removed, and the pathologist can tell you exactly what these cells are and whether there are any abnormal cells. But as far as when you should worry about ovarian cysts, most of the time you don't need to, um, but it's really good to talk to your doctor. And that's what I want to leave you with. If you are diagnosed with an ovarian cyst, here are three important questions to ask your doctor. Question number one, what kind of ovarian cyst do I have? Ask them. We talked about the five types here and ask what kind is it and how do we know and go over the imaging results with you and your psych goals and figure out what kind of cyst it is. Question number two, how are we going to monitor this cyst? Is this something that's probably going to go away? Are we going to do an ultrasound in four to six weeks? Are we going to do an ultrasound in a couple of months? Like, how are we going to figure out what's going on with this cyst? And question number three, what are the risks to me for having this cyst? Is it large enough to worry about ovarian torsion happening at some point? Are the cells looking abnormal? Like, should I be concerned about cancer or abnormal cells? Does it look like an endometrioma? Is there a chance that I have endometriosis? Like, you know, ask, what are my risks in having this cyst and how can I figure out the pros and cons? I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you found it valuable to learn all about ovarian cysts. They can come and go. The ovaries are so dynamic, but there are times where it's really important to do that follow-up, get that treatment and ask your doctor what is next. Thank you to my team at Audiotocracy for producing an incredible show and thank you for being here today. Remember just how important it is to follow the show wherever you're listening. You can get this episode and all others at my website, drlaurashaheen.com. You can follow me on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok. I love learning. This is your host, Dr. Laura Shaheen. And until next week, stay brave and curious.